Good morning. Hi, Fran. Hi, Denise. Hi, Sherry. So I'm trying to get all my ducks lined up and they're all going crazy. Hi, Pam. I will tell the rainbow stamper you said good morning. Hi, Karen. How are you guys all doing today? Good morning, Terry. Hi, Sherry. Sandra. Thank you all for sharing. I appreciate it. I was just printing this out so I wouldn't forget it. So just in case you didn't know, mm, excuse me, I had like a major sneezing fit before I went live and apparently it's still annoying me. <laughs> um, bonus days started yesterday. So in July for every $50 you spend before shipping and tax, you will receive a $5 coupon to use in August. Um, they will send this via email. They won't send it again. So be sure you don't delete it. So I usually like will flag like put that little flag you can on your email if you have an iPhone. I'm sure they have something else for Google phones or every other phone. Um, so that started yesterday. And you can get as many as you want. So if you were to uh, have a $300 order, you would get six $5 coupons. So you would get $30 free. So you can think of it as like maybe like free shipping or like a little bonus to get something that maybe you've wanted. So cool. Another awesome special that started yesterday but runs through August 31st is called Extra Extra. So this is, um, you get two extras, which is cool. So normally, you know, you can purchase $125 as a demonstrator starter kit for $99. Well, they upped it to $155 for $99. And additionally, the month after you join, so this is valid all of July and all of August. So July 1st through August 31st. So if you were to join July 6th, on August 6th, you will get a $10 coupon code to use. So again, it's kind of like you could use it as free shipping or maybe if you wanted to get something, but you were like, eh, it's $10 more, you could use that as your $10 discount. So both of these promotions are running. This one, again, is only valid in um, July. And then the joining as a demonstrator, if you'd like to do that, I would love to have you on my team. It's lots of fun. I have lots of actually team members that are watching here. And you can join just for the discount. You are not required to make videos or sell anything or send it back if you don't use it so very simple no pressure if you have questions feel free to shout out so before we start today what I decided to do was I'm going to make a few of the cards that are on here we're going to do this card this card and this card but also I was going to make a card kind of a template that I set up um, via a bridge fold card that one of my club members asked me to do from um, Jennifer McGuire so it is a copy of something that she created, but I want to show you first a couple things that I did. So yesterday uh, we were sitting by the pool and we have a pool in our backyard. We are very blessed. We have a pool. And so the rainbow stamper was swimming and I wasn't feeling like swimming. So what I did was I did a little bit of coloring. So I just want to share with you guys a couple things that I did. I colored these using the, um, and this is the cool part. Both of these are back in case you missed them. The watercolor pencils. I used majority, I used the watercolor pencils and the blender pen. But then I also added in a little bit of the Stampin' Blends on some of them just for color. So, and then I added a little bit of shading. So I kind of figured, I saw this somewhere. I can't remember where I saw it, but I saw a really cute card. And what they did was, maybe it was a little bit bigger. They cut out the bear. This one might have been, this one was probably in the catalog with the circle. But they cut out the panda bear with the circle and then they laid it on top of something. So I thought that was cute. So I just did two of those. And then I also did two foxes. This one I think I made him a little too dark. So I don't know if there's any fox experts out there. I was, uh, I probably should have looked at a picture, but there were no sleeping foxes with babies in my yard. So I just did the best I could. So the second one I did make his face a little bit lighter. But that was fun. And then I also did a few birds. This one was with a combination of the um, watercolor pencils. And if you guys like the watercolor pencils and maybe you don't know exactly how to use them or you don't feel like you're great at it yet, I'll be happy to do a tutorial for you. So, And then this one was with watercolor pencils only. 
And then I just use the blender pen instead of water. So I, I, I like the blender pen because I think it gives a softer feel. Also with this, this is regular Whisper White versus having um, watercolor paper specifically. So that is the difference of those. Jennifer McGuire makes you feel enough. Jennifer McGuire is amazingly talented. And I kind of figure, Donna, if I like even slightly strive towards achieving anything that she's accomplished remotely, then I feel happy. <laughs> and thank you very much, Donna, for your order. I appreciate your order very much. Donna is one of my um, frequent buyers, frequent flyers. I need to start a frequent flyer club. That's what I really need to do. I need to get on that bandwagon and get that all situated. So I'm going to show you two things. Now, this one I did with just the Stampin' Blends. The birds. This is a little out of the lines, which I was trying to come at peace with, but I guess I should have made them all a little bit out of the lines so they're like a little fuzzy looking. So I did this one exclusively with blends. And then I want to show you something. So I was doing a second one because I figure if I stamped one, I might as well stamp two. I cut it in half and use it for something. So the rainbow stamper colored the majority of this for me. I'm going to just give a little thing. I did the branch and the flowers. But he colored almost all of the rest of these birds by himself. Now, I will say, I kind of told him, like, for this one, I was like, okay, don't do too much because we were trying to go for light birds and then we went and added a little bit more yellow. But I think that is pretty good considering little, you know, squeaky hands you have because he says he's always nervous and he gets crazy and goes out of the lines. But I think he did pretty well for this one. I actually like this one better than mine. So I guess it's different. One's really bright. And one's a little bit softer, so I guess you can't really compare them. <laughs> and then um, I did a couple with the piggy. The only one I didn't get to was the horse because I basically took a whole bunch of images outside that I could color in. So this one I did, believe it or not, this is Calypso Coral, which is really looking light on here, but it's definitely pink, much more pink in person. And then this one, I think I used more of the um, Melon Mambo and Flirty Flamingo. But this one, again, I did with almost exclusively with the watercolor pencils. I used the blender pen again. I did not use water. And this is just on regular paper. So you can see that even on here on the blends. It's just regular Whisper White. And then I added, I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. I thought I added just a little bit of blends. I might have added just a tiny bit of blends right here on the pig ear and the feet. But obviously, it wasn't enough that it went through to the other side. And then I just want to show you two final cards and we'll get started. This one was a stamp set I absolutely had to have. So this is the first one I did. I made one for the UPS guy. And we typically do have a guy. I've never had a UPS lady. So I guess that kind of works out well. Because if not, we'd have to find a way to erase this mustache and give her a ponytail. <laughs> but anyway, I did this one with a combination of the watercolor pencils and the blends. You can see it kind of gives a lot of depth to it. I really want to pat myself on the back. I, Jennifer McGuire, these boxes, didn't I, Donna? Because those boxes look real. I, did, I was very proud of myself for those. And then the last one I did, because, you know, only the UPS guy isn't the only one. So I also did one for the postman, and we do have a male postman. So I'm going to have to give, make both of these up into actual cards, and I'll show you. But this, um, the ideas were the Christian suggested to have the flowers, him have the flowers and have the dog running in front like it was running up to the front door to tell the person that they got flowers. So that's what he said. And if you know him, you know he loves all things red, white, and blue. He is Mr. Patriotic. So I had to add some red. He tried to get me to add orange too, but I made just the envelope orange. So this one I did um, with watercolor pencils, except for the stripe I did with the, I believe it was peacock the light peacock um blend I feel like like that's right I think it was light peacock and then the dog I did with a combination of the pencils and the blends but I think they all turned out really fun and I was just like doing again I was trying to do what Gail does so I always say WWG what would Gail do because Gail's always saying all she does is play with stuff and it does really give you some great cards when you just like fool around with things so now we will get on to what we're going to make today. So one of them kind of is a work in progress. And you can see I even goofed this up when I used my Stamparatus. I don't know. I didn't reline it. So I just flipped it over and started again. So as long as we tape that down dark enough, no one will ever know except for all of you guys. My, my UPS or mailman will never know. Let's put it that way. So I was trying to like fool around with some stuff and just give myself some ideas of what to play with. 
So here is what I came up with. So we're going to do, and I will, I'm going to tell you this. I will do a hundred percent separate video for this one card that I created. And I'm going to put this, um, the second video up when I go on vacation. So we're going on vacation, um, the week after next. So while I'm gone, I will put up some videos and I will make this one specifically. So this first card, I wanted you to know that I kind of did like a combo. So I know we're doing the dinosaur, but I got the wiggle worm out to make, to use this grass. Because what I thought, so my friend in Stamp Club, and the reason I wanted to show you this is to explain it. My friend in Stamp Club asked if I would make a bridge fold card like the one that Jennifer McGuire created recently. So I'm going to show you what I did for the background. We're actually going to put this together. I'm also going to show you that under here is a big smudge from my hand. So I just covered it with a leaf. And here I didn't uh, clean off my, my branch, had like a line on it. So I just kind of put some little extra stuff on there. But this is a bridge fold card and I thought instead of using like a traditional piece to keep it together We would use a piece of grass and we'll use it like that But the other thing I wanted to show you that I thought was really cool in case you are making these cards so what I did was I just took a strip of um, Oh my gosh, I just had a brain fart Garden green. Whew, I don't even know what I was going to say there. And I cut it. I just kept moving this line down. So I like, I lined it up. You can see there. I lined it up and then I moved it over again. And then I just relined it up and I kept cutting. But the cool part is, so when you pull it apart, you will get, where is this going to go? Like kind of right here. Let's just say I pulled it apart. So I had this piece, you can see how big it was that I cut, but quite honestly, you could use either side for the grass because they both look like grasses. So if you do this correctly, you can technically get two for one because nobody's really going to know which side is the grass. So if you do this with the grass with like a bridge fold or say you just want to make a grass, keep both sides because they both look like grass to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain what I did for this one. I also made a little piece for the background like Jennifer did. So that's going to go in there just like that. And I will give all the measurements for this. Isn't that going to be adorable? I will give all the measurements for this. I cut out some dinosaurs. When I actually go through with doing it, I have a second piece since I cut this in half that I technically could trim down for another card. And then there's more grass. And then I also cut out a whole bunch of extra leaves just in case I felt like I needed to like cover something up so let me move this over so I just wanted to show you where that little grass piece came from so this is in the wiggle worm bundle which again you can buy the die and the stamp set if you buy them together in my online store you will save 10% and then I'll kind of just keep like all these little extra pieces um, I'll keep these either with the dinosaurs and I cut some of these out ahead of time just to have them with the dinosaurs or the bug because you could use them inter interchangeably so for this card, also when I um, I did this originally, this was something else I was fiddling with out by the pool. I kind of figured that you can cut this a couple different ways. So it just kind of depends on what you want to do. So I cut one of them incorrectly. So this is the one that I believe is just like this one. Is that right? Yep, almost exactly. So this one you would cut at one and a quarter. Or I should say, you would score it one and a quarter, two and a half. Then you turn it around, score it one and a quarter, two and a half. But you can also do it a different way. So this way, what I did by accident, the first time I scored, I scored it two and a half and then one and a quarter. And then flipped it over two and a half, one and a quarter. So it still will fold the same. And where are, here's my envelope. And this will, should, let me make sure I don't make a fool of myself when I say this. It should still fit. I didn't, nope, that one is trimmed down. This is uh, four and a quarter. So it will fit in an envelope when it's closed. All of these will. Because now when you do them, though, granted, you're going to have them open this way because that piece is going to be holding them together. But they will fit in. So you see it fits in. So what we'll do is we'll put finish putting this one together and then we'll move on to the other couple cards that I have. So move this out of the way. And we're just going to assemble this. So what I did was, for this card, I stamped the uh, palm tree. And these 
are photopolymer. So the cool part about these is if you have it, you could do it straight up just like this, right? Or if you wanted to, and I should have done this with like a little bit of forethought, but this was my first one. So when I do the second one, I'll make it a little bit better, but you can use this. You can bend it. You can even, I even had it so it bent two different ways. It did take a little bit of pressing, but you can see it kind of makes more like an S curve. So you could do it like that. So you can make these however you want to make them. So that part is pretty cool. So I stamped both of these in the background. I stamped the foreground was in soft suede. And then the background I did in crumb cake. And then I just kind of changed up the color of the leaves. I did stamp these first. So I stamped the base, then the leaves. And then what I did was I went in and I kind of sponged. Now, if I would have done this before, what I would have done is I would have gone ahead and pre-sponged the back. I did use um, Pool Party for the top. And as you can see, there's a lot of green in there because I used a sponge that was dirty without cleaning it because I'm not smart for sometimes. And I used Pretty Peacock for the bottom, which actually gave a really pretty color, I thought, to the base of the card. And then what I did was I used the little... Um, stones that are in here boy my uh Baltimore accent came out on that I use the stones I do accents as well so don't mind me if I ever go into one obnoxious accent but I use the stones I stamped these in soft suede and then I colored them in with Sahara sand and then I glued just the grass to the back just like that okay <laughs> They would they would love this set because it's so much fun. And that's one thing that Christian said. He can't wait to use this set as well. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of adhesive because I want to put this in first. And then we'll put the grass on the front. I probably, I also cut out a pterodactyl so we could kind of hook him on here somewhere. But I haven't figured out where. I kind of thought maybe I was going to put, oopsie, the dinosaur like behind the grass but I'm still not 100% sure. And then one other thing that Jennifer did on her card was she cut out a little note card. That way, if you wanted to be able to put something on the back, like that had a little bit more meaning in it, you could even like attach a gift card to the inside of this. You could just attach this to the back or you can write on the back. Kind of just depends on what it is you want to do. One other thing I would suggest is when you do the background of your card to use Thick Whisper White so it will hold up because you need something that's really going to hold up um, with all the stuff attached to it and with all the blending and everything. So let me just put, and I think I'm going to use, um, I normally would use fast fuse on this, but because I want to be able to adjust it a little bit, I'm going to use, um, Tombow. So I'm going to just put a tiny bit right here. And this one is just a quarter inch, um, strip of cardstock. So I'm going to smear it a little bit. That way it doesn't go gushing all over my card. And I have just like a little old tea towel that I kind of keep around so I don't try to get things not sticky. So then I'm going to put this right here at the bottom. Just like that. And make sure that it's kind of to the bottom. There we go. So there's going to be that part. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my, is this the right one? Let me just make sure that I have this because I do want this to be able to fold down. So I want to make sure I give it a press so it will fold. You can kind of do both ways, but quite honestly, I have found in my experience, and it could just be because maybe I'm not super at it, you can only really fold it one way. When you fold it the other way, sometimes it tends to get wonky. So I kind of just decide, okay, this is going to close to this side. And then what you're going to do is you're going to lay your grass across. And we're going to put a little bit of liquid glue down here on the bottom. Again, if you want to like put the dinosaur in, so he's back here. This is kind of when you have to make your decision of where do you want things to go. So we can put him like that, which will be totally cute. So I think I'm going to do that. So we're going to put him. I'm going to put a little bit of glue, and I'm only going to put it on his legs here and attach this. You're done working for the day. Oh, Anka, aren't you lucky? Anka is in the Netherlands, just in case you guys didn't know. So she's way ahead of us time-wise. 
And also, if anyone is watching, I'm sure there's probably not very many demonstrators watching because they're probably feverishly packing, but you know they're all going to be going on their incentive trip, which is amazing. I am not going on the incentive trip, just in case you were curious and you thought maybe I was, but maybe um, not next year, maybe the year after. Maybe I will be fortunate enough to go the year after. We'll see. But I'm sure there's lots of demos feverishly packing. I know Kylie Bertucci I saw was already on her airplane. You know, she's from Australia, so she has a heck of a flight. So I hope all of you have a wonderful trip. What an amazing, I'm going to spread this over just a little bit, amazing achievement to be able to go on the incentive trip. That is, it's a goal. I will achieve one of these days. One day. So I'm just folding this flat. That way I can rest assured that nothing is lined up incorrectly. I'm kind of just pressing that on top. And I'm just going to so then I should have put a little bit more glue. And actually, I'm going to try and sneak just a teeny bit underneath of here. Yes, it is going to be hot and grease. You got that right. All right. See, you want to make sure you don't goop. There we go. Okay. So I just want to make sure that none of mine leaked out under. So there we go. So now I have this. So it does actually stand up. So it actually stood. That's good. I do have to trim just a teeny bit off, but I want to wait for that glue to dry a little bit. So now you have your bridge fold card with the grass holding it, which is adorable. And now I'm just going to add in just the other. I have my pterodactyl that I'm going to add in. You could always add a sentiment to this as well. Again, I am going to go with the liquid glue just because... That way, if you kind of want to move something, you have the ability to be able to move it. Plus, I think sometimes when you move the glue around, it kind of spreads it a little bit so it sticks a little better. So there you go. You can see that's totally, totally adorable. You could always throw in like a leaf or two if you wanted to underneath of there. If you goof something up, you can mess up with embellishments. You could always cover it up. You can add like another leaf like above this dinosaur here, if you felt like you wanted to. I know this one I didn't glue into place, so that's why it's kind of just free falling. Like Tom Petty, free falling. But you can make this as much or as little as you want. And then what you would do is if you decided you were gonna add this one to the back, all you have to do is just add some liquid glue and then you could have a little stand behind there. So I thought that one was totally cute out of the box. So again, I will do a full video on how to measure for this and I'll do it with, um, I'm just going to do it as a recorded video. That way it'll be like easy to follow instead of me yakking on about 50 million different things. I'm just going to trim that piece off. But I thought it was a cute idea to have the grass holding it versus just like a strip of paper. I thought that was adorable. And again, kind of also gave me the, uh, wherever my second grass went, my double grass. So then, if you close this, let's just see, it should fit, and this is just a regular, I believe this is A2, for some reason I always thought this was A4, but this is an A2 envelope, and you see it completely fits in there, nothing sticking out, so all good. And then when it comes from the person, or the person gets it, they can just stand it up and look at it. So I thought that was super, super, super cute idea. And again, don't forget, you could use the other side of the grass. Nobody's going to know it's the upside down except for you. Oh, look, just the upside down. Speaking of, does anybody watch Stranger Things? I think that's coming back soon. Had to figure out how to make an upside down card, but that show is just whew, crazy. Okay, so there's the dino. So I'm going to set him on the side. And then I will bring that back to show you guys again when we're finished. So let me move these over here. These are also adorably cute. These are the Dino Roar shapes. So you can always like, if you need to add a little extra something or cover up a boo-boo. That's usually mostly what I use them for, if we're being honest, is to cover up whoopsies. Okay, so I have quite a few cards to make. I believe I did three. So I thought three would be fun. And just in case you haven't seen it, this paper is flipping adorable have all these. These would be a great scrapbook page. I love this one with the eggs. So there's one you could do look who's hatched because you, you do have an egg. You can cut out both sides of it and make a hatching egg. And they have prints for boys and girls. Lots of great color combinations which I think is just fabulous. You have this. I tried to work this in with a bug card but I think I just did too much so I'm still working on working this in with a bug card. 
Um, you have another like different outlines of dinosaurs. Lots of really cool pages in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of work our way through this catalog page. And I just kind of winged it. I looked at what they did and kind of estimated what I thought they did and started them. <laughs> For the demonstrator's sake. You know, the thing is, though, I guess it's because summer, because you figure most people, I kind of thought that myself, Donna, because I was like, you know, going places when it's uber hot has got to be just totally disgusting. But if people want to be able to, like, take their families, I guess that's why they plan them in the summer. I don't know. But... I, I don't know. Personally, I like hot weather, so that really wouldn't bother me so much. However, I don't know how hot it is in Europe. I've never been there, so I'm sure that's like a whole other level of excessive warmth. And happy anniversary to Linda. Awesome. Just going back here and checking some of the comments. This DSP is called Dino Roar. 99% sure that's what it's called. So, Dino Roar Designer Series Paper. And just in case you didn't know, it does tell you all the colors it matches with, which I think is really nice. So, I always save those papers. Okay, so, let us get started. What do we have first? I'm trying to think. I think this one was kind of more of a simple one. So, I'm going to do this one first. So, you'll understand in one moment. Move this over. And... Okay, so this one is going to be this card, but I kind of like modified it a little bit, okay? So what I did was I cut my strips at an inch, and if you cut them at an inch, they're a little bit too big to fit four of them. So if you wanted to do four, you would do probably like a half inch. So instead, I'm just changing it to three. So I have uh, three strips that are one inch by five and a quarter. And then I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock. And I believe this measures three and a half. Let me see if I'm masculine. Nope, three inches. So this is three inches by four and a quarter. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of like decorate the background of this. I'm not going to do the hearts like it is. I am going to do a dinosaur and I'll do I love you this much. It's more than it looks. We'll do that. But I'm going to do a dinosaur. I'm just going to do something different for the background. Just not 100% sure exactly what yet. So another thing you could do is if you're like struggling for what to put in the background, like for example, that one has hearts. You see this has these little pink dinosaurs. You could do a couple things. We could cut this guy out, which would be super simple. So what we can do is we can cut this dinosaur out and use it for our card to make it easy. Or you could stamp one and cut it out. Either way works fine. And so we have these dinosaurs here. And then on this page we have these little dinosaurs so what we can do is to make this simple and I know it may be a little busy for some people and if you don't like it that's fine you could do something different the good part about all of this is you can always change something different we could even do these little little circles too that way it's not too busy I think as a matter of fact we'll go with that what we're gonna do is we're gonna punch out some circles with our punches to make it easy and then we will cut out a dinosaur so this could be one of those kind of cards that it looks like it's hard, but we're going to make it easier. So let me grab these two and I just have to move this back out of the way. The um, punches, or I should say the dies, they do match. So you can cut out a lot of the dinosaurs. Now, granted, one thing that's a little bit different is if you cut these out, these are two different things. So this is going to cut out the shape of him or her, whichever it is. For some reason, I think all dinosaurs are boys, but I, apparently that can't be true, right? Or else there wouldn't be dinosaurs. And then this one, you would use to cut out the little fringy part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp the fringy part, cut this out, and then I'm going to cut out the dinosaur with the shape, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then I'm going to punch out six shapes out of this one, and I'm going to use a circle punch. And what we'll do is one and a quarter might be a little big. I'm just going to punch one out just to see. Let's see. Move this over. So we have that here. No, that'll work out fine. So I'm going to punch out six of these. And I just kind of try to stick close to the edge. That way I can get my money's worth because, you know, I am a paper hoarder. 
So that's one, two, three, four, five. We'll do one more. Six. So there's six shapes. So again, that was the one and a quarter inch circle punch. So made it really easy. Punched out really super fast. Then I am going to punch out, or I'm going to die cut this dinosaur. Which one's closest to the edge? Actually, I'm going to do this one because it's closer to the edge. So it'll be less paper. And the other thing I'm going to do is just trim this. We can try to save some of the other dinosaurs. I know uh, Linda Cullen is going on her first incentive trip and she is going to Greece. So on the odd chance that she's watching this on the flight because she needs something to fall asleep to. Hope you have a super trip, Linda. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut this out here. Never fails. The phone always rings, doesn't it? Always, always. And I'm going to stamp this part. So this is the little part that goes with the dinosaur. As you can see, it goes like that. I'm going to stamp this. And I'm going to do in lovely lipstick. And we'll cut this out. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run both of these through the big shot. Forgot my die cut. I want to show you these and I didn't cut it out just because I didn't feel like lugging it over here so it cuts this guy out absolutely perfectly so but the thing is when you cut out your die sometimes with the back part sometimes it's like if you line it up not correctly you have this big white but honestly when you line it up you kind of want something to be able to stick this behind so even though you have that big white it really is kind of purposeful where it is because it gives you something to adhere to. Now you can always, if you wanted to go back and you could use your snips and maybe take like a little bit of this part off because for some reason, whenever I do that, I never line it up exactly as I like, but it gives you a nice spot to be able to hook this into. So this one is pretty much done. The only other thing we have to do is we have to add the sentiment and we will do the sentiment in so they did theirs in like, looks like peacock because they matched it to their, um, their spikes. They did theirs with peacock on probably coastal cabana. I'm going to bet. I'm going to do mine a little bit differently. What I will do is, let's see, what's one of these other nice colors we have in here. I'm going to do mine in lipstick. We're going to stick with a pink. So this would be for like any of your nieces, granddaughters, whoever the case may be, that love dinosaurs because there are those girls out there, believe me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this a couple different times because we're actually going to take it apart. Let me move this over. And I'm going to do it again in lovely lipstick. So I'm going to stamp it twice just in case I end up cutting part of it off. Okay, which these always look really cute, but being honest, I never end up doing them. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just trim this off. So I'm going to go with, I love you. So I have, I love you and I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to kind of make the bottom wiggly and the top straight. Because, you know, when it's your card, you can make it whatever you want. I'm going to do the same with this one. So I have the this much here. So I have the top straight. I'm cutting out the this. And I'm kind of just following the letters. And I'm at, as a matter of fact, I'm just thinking about this, Fran. I bet you Mary would love this because technically lizards are a form of dinosaur, right? So I'm going to do this one more on the reverse side. That way I can do the, uh, it's more than it looks. 
It is a very cute idea. If only it was mine, right? That's okay. And let's see. So then I just stamped that onto the back of what I already did. And then for this one, I'm going to do the bottom of this one straight. So it's kind of like the reverse. And you could, if you wanted to, to make this simpler, you could totally mask this. And that way you wouldn't have to worry about like what was squiggly and what was straight. But I'm just doing it Rachel's way. All right. So there you go. I love you this much. It's more than it looks. So you have our sentiment all knocked out. So now all we have to do is put this together. So same thing again. I'm going to use a little bit of um, liquid glue. I'm just going to grab my... silicone mat here that way if I get any uh, glue on it it wipes off super easy I'm kind of spreading it out as well and I'm going to lay my dyno on top just like that and I'm going to pick the whole thing up together okay so I'm going to just do that I'm going to set this on the side clean that up after so we have that this and then I have all my pieces so all you have to do is put this baby together and I want to tell you guys one other thing the other week someone commented on my chamois that it was so gross it needed to be clean and I do agree with you but I'm going to tell you what I soaked this bugger it is what it is it is not coming clean I clearly like black ink a lot <laughs> so it is all over everything so yeah guess my only hope is to get a new chamois. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip all of these over. Oh my gosh, am I missing one? Here we go. I'm going to flip all these over. And the same thing again, I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on the inside of the circle. And I'm going to start by picking them up. And I am going to try to keep the line straight. That's the only symmetry I'm going to go for here. Oh, look at that. They actually even match. How do you like that? So, let's see. Same thing again. Just have my lines kind of straight. But the good thing about the liquid glue is if you need to, like, rotate them a little bit, you can. And... Eh, yellow and blue. Yeah. That's close enough. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing for this. I'm going to flip these three over. And if you wanted to, you could use the other side of this. So if you wanted to make this like a little less pink, you could use the other side. You could totally lay this on a base of real red because that will coordinate with it really nicely. I think if you go with the greens, either of the greens, if you were to change this, it's a little bit much. So I would try to stick with the reds. Or the real red, I should say. Or you could even use Poppy Parade. So let me see. I'm going to try to get these kind of lined up before I stick them down really hard. You absolutely can get out your uh, T-square ruler if you wanted to. Let me just close this so I can see. I think that looks pretty good. I put the center one down first. That way I could kind of space between the other two. But I think that's very nice the way it is so put this on here so again i'm just going to put some liquid glue i am going to make sure i get all the way to the corner on these that way it won't rip off of the card in case anybody gets like so excited that they get this card for me that they just rip it apart i know that was supposed to be a joke in case you didn't get it <laughs> oh i know believe me gail i feel the same way about my chamois it is not pretty but it works so then we're going to just use, and I think I might have put them away. Can you believe it? I put something away. Now it's like a small miracle. So I'm going to use the strips for this because I think they should be thin enough. So I'm going to put these on with strips and then I'll put the dinosaur on as well. So I'm just putting, um, these are just the foam strips. Put one there one here 
Obviously, if you want to, you could put a white panel on the inside. You could decorate it up with some pink leaves. Some different color pink stones would be super fun. So I'm just going to press these down just to make sure it's on there. And then I'm going to put him on with um, dimensionals. And as I said, you can mix. So you could have like dimensionals and you can have strips, but you don't want to mix them on the same piece because the dimensionals and the strips have totally different heights. So from that card I made that one time, I can't remember, I know it was pretty recently, and I kind of intermixed them and it ended up making the thing look super wonky. So if you stick with dimensionals, they're thinner, strips are fatter. You can totally see the difference there. So if you're going to stick with one, just put strips on one thing, dimensionals on the other. So I'm going to put my dinosaur on first. This would be a super cute birthday card or just like a nice like thinking of you card. Gail, if you came in late, you have to go back and watch the beginning of this because I uh, I paid homage to you with your... Oh, look, I put my dimensional right where his mouth is. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Put a little bit of red in here. Oops, wrong side. This would probably be silly, but... <laughs> I know, that's ridiculous. I'm ridiculous. I can't help it. But I did. I played with some stuff yesterday. I did a what would Gail do? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put the, it's more than it looks down here at the bottom. I'm going to put the I love you up here. And do the this much. How cute is that? Really simple too because we did a lot of die cutting. This was just with circle punches. We cut the strips. Super easy. You can make a whole bunch of these with different themes. Again, um, I cut this white strip just to have something for it to go on. So similar but not exactly the same as the catalog. So it's a similar card. They used um, probably either Petal Pink or Blushing Bride, I'm betting on theirs. And I went with Flirty Flamingo. So a little bit darker, but totally fun. So that's number one card that we made. Let me just move these other things out of the way. Now the second card, hold on, let me clean this sentiment off because I might need it again. You never know. And put this over here. Put my snips. Oh my gosh, so in case you guys didn't see it. Here's this. You can look at this while I clean the debris off my desk. I got it all loaded up. I, I managed to get my angled tweezers and my scissors in there together. So <laughs> I have both of them loaded because I like to have both because I use both a lot. So there's my little uh, MVP. And it is really nice because you can fit it on your desk. You can fit like a lot of stuff in it. You know, me with all my caps, everybody was poking fun at me because I still have everything capped. But I'm a dangerous crafter, so I have to make sure I have the, the caps on everything or I may hurt myself. <laughs> okay, so for the second card, this one's a little bit easier. This card we're going to create. Again, I did some of the cutting ahead of time, so we're going to do this one. So I kind of changed um, just a couple things on this, not too many things, though. So we're going to make this one here. So it's kind of like a little window card. So I did use, and I wanted to show you which one. I believe this is the, that's the largest. This is the second from the largest of the layering ovals is what I cut this out with, okay? So just so you know. And then you could also save the oval that you pull out. You could use this for something else. You could use the background for something else. We could put the background on the inside, just kind of dependent. Um, I did go ahead and fussy cut a few of these out of the paper. You could use little dinosaurs. You could use the bigger dinosaurs. But if you look at... This page here, there's lots of stuff that you can cut out. That's where the volcano came from. So you see, I do have a little volcano here, right? So I cut that out. I didn't leave the long strips on. I kind of just trimmed them off. Um, you can cut some of these guys out if you feel like it. If you don't like fussy cutting, maybe you have one of those brother scan and cuts. You could just run the whole thing through. It could cut a lot of stuff out for you, make things really simple. Just up to you, whatever it is you want to do. So for this card, this is fairly simple. I have a piece, and so this is the other side if you can see that. This is the, the paper with all the cutouts and then the other side looks like this. So I just cut out the oval and I'm going to use this side. 
And then I have another strip of paper. I feel like this was three and a half. Eh, three and a quarter by four and a half. Okay, so this matches this exactly. So it's going to just layer over top of that. We're going to build our scene on here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just for the sake of trying to make things simple, if I can find my pencil. Put, I cleaned my desk, so now I don't know where anything is. So I'm going to just take my... um just my little pencil here, line this up, and I'm going to just put just a little oval on each side. That way when we line this up, we know exactly where to put stuff. So if we were to put our volcano in here, we can put the pterodactyl. Like some of these things you could put on the outside if you wanted to. We can put, I trimmed out a couple clouds. You could stamp clouds if you wanted to instead. The other thing I'm going to do is I am going to stamp on the bottom of this so for theirs, what they did was they stamped onto paper and cut it out, but I'm going to just stamp it onto the base of this. So I'm going to do that first, and then we'll add all the rest of our stuff. So what they did was they just used the palm tree kind of as like a grass stone-ish thing. I really know what you want to call it. But we'll do this, and I'm going to go with old olive and granny apple green. So I'm going to stamp one one way and one the other way. So we just have, and I'm gonna keep kind of layering these. So there's one old olive. I'll go with two on top of it. And then I'm gonna do the same with the uh, granny apple green. Yeah, <laughs> you jab yourself and lose parts. Exactly, I am forever sticking myself with needles or especially because I like to I sew and I fix things and man I tell you the amount of times I have a uh a thimble I don't ever use my thimble but and I'm gonna just kind of put this down a little bit because I don't want it to be too high okay so there's that so that's the bottom you could totally mix up the colors whatever it is you want to do and then we're gonna put this put our volcano over here Put our clouds. You could put a dinosaur inside if you want. I'm going to put, I think, one on the inside. Put like that. And then I'm going to put a little bit of, I'm actually going to poke his head out. So we'll put this on the inside and we'll poke him so he's kind of like partially in. Oh, come on. And out. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to put this part together first. So I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on the back of these. Again, same thing. I'm going to kind of stick with the Tombow because that way if you want to like shift it from where you have it, you can move it a little bit. Okay. If you really have issues with your dexterity at this point, you could also use your um, angle tweezers. Stampin' Up! does not make angle tweezers. But I got mine on Amazon. I really like them too. Oops. So I'm going to kind of put these. And I want him to be kind of like sideways. Look, he's poking in there. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of overlay this. Make sure I like it. I'm going to move him over a little. Move this guy over. Yeah. Well, he might be staying right where he is. He's where he is. He is where he is. Go with that. And then I'm going to put, where's that dinosaur? I'm going to put this guy, I'm just going to glue the bottom of him down. That way I can stick the head out. I think he, I wanted him to kind of cover up the base of that. Let's see. Bring him down some. Mm. Should have gone down just a little bit more with this. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull out my granny apple green one more time. And just fill in the bottom there. There you go. That way it covers that part up. Yeah, those tweezers are amazing. They are weird because you have to get used to like the backward grip of them. But I really, really like them. So I'm going to do the same thing. Once again, I'm going to just put the liquid glue down. That way if this isn't lined up exactly how I want, I can kind of move it. I just have a little edge going all around. Buddy, stop banging. Okay. Thank you. It's all right. Don't want the house to fall down. And 
So there's that. Now, granted, I could have moved him down a little bit. I'm afraid I'm going to rip it if I do. So I'm going to stick this underneath. Come on. And then I'm going to cover this up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we could put like him on the outside. I'm going to put him, I think. I'm going to put him on the outside. I have that little dinosaur egg. Boys are so loud, are they? Are they? Is it just me? Is it just this one here that lives with me? Obviously, I've never had a child before, so I don't really know. I'm going to put some mini dimensionals on him and pop him up, but boys are so loud about everything. They're just... Oh my goodness. Loud, 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 loud. Okay, now I'm gonna put mini dimensionals on this little pterodactyl. Hey, Lisa. I was just featuring your little product here, girl. put him up here okay so then I think that was kind of it and then they added a sentiment so we will add a sentiment but I want to put something on this background so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more thing I'm gonna clean this off now we could either do this with these with the uh, rocks aka palm tree or you could do it with like these little stones, these little things here. You can even do it with the leaf. But I'm going to do it with this just since I have it out. I'm going to close my... This is so saffron. I'm going to close this. And just to bring in the orange, I'm going to do this with Melon Mambo. And it doesn't have to be the whole thing. Because remember, this is going to be covering. And you could even put this kind of sideways if you want to give it like that picture look. But what I'm going to do is... Let me move this over because I'm going to do this one here. Is I'm going to just stamp this and I'm gonna try to turn it around a little bit I'll keep that one like that just around the side just like for a little bit more visual interest to the side I don't know I always think this makes it a little bit more fun and clearly my uh, pad needs to be re-inked because it is got all kinds of it's like ombre <laughs> it's an ombre pad all right, let's see if that's enough. Yeah, that's pretty fun. So we'll leave it like that because I don't want to make it too much there where it's like overwhelming. And then all we have to do now is just grab, I have a little piece of scrap here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our sentiment. Your granddaughter is louder than her twin brother. I mean, I'm not saying girls aren't loud, but just the, the amount of stomping. Oi! The stomping. All right, so for this one, they have their sentiment. It's kind of backed on a little piece of yellow. So we'll do ours on something else. And they just added your roar some. I love. I like the other one too that says thanks for being a friendosaurus. That's really adorable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick one of these other colors. So I'm gonna do it in old olive for the sentiment, and then we'll back it in something different. All right, so there's that. You're Rarsome. And for theirs, what they did was they went ahead and just kind of flagged both ends. So I'm going to do that. I'm just snipping in the middle, and then I'm meeting it with my scissors. Speaking of, while we're speaking of, I did post the winner for the Tipsy from last week. But I cannot remember what her name is. I do apologize. I didn't post it onto the Facebook page, but I did post it on my blog. So if you go to the July winners, you, uh, the name number two is the person who won the tipsy. So if you know her, make sure you tag her. I'm going to back this in. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff on here to pick from. I'm going to do it in a little bit of so saffron. Just so it's like a little bit lighter. Plus, it just so happens that I have a piece that will fit it. So that's pretty good. Oh, actually, that's two pieces. So I'm going to just hand trim this down just a little bit. Just like that. I'll just, I'm going to keep this on here so I can kind of see what I'm doing. All right, let's see if I can make this work. 
Oops. And that's good enough. And yeah, I'm not happy with that. Let me cut this in a little bit more. Dang it. Nope. Hold on. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it a little bit more angled. Mm, I don't know. I think this piece I cut too slim. Might have to cut it in half and patch it together behind it. Dang on it. I just did the same exact thing that I did for this one. I'm going to trim this down just a smidge to compensate because I'm not getting on another piece of paper. See, but this is the part that's funny. When we're not live, this is what you miss because when I make a video, I try to make it so it's a little bit nicer and slightly more professional without all this extra jibber jabber. Alrighty, so... Just to make this, because it's a dinosaur, so I'm going to kind of off-center it, which my niece would be totally thrilled about the fact that I off-centered it. And I had one around here because I know I just cleaned them. Here's one. Here's two. I'm going to just take my um, sponge dauber. And this is super wet, so I'm going to just wipe this off a little bit. So just so you know, you can clean your sponge daubers. All you kind of do is just rinse them out in water, but they do still say, like, stay just slightly damp. So what I'm going to do is, this would have been cool if I'd have thought about it ahead of time. I could have stamped the, um, the rocks onto the background of this yellow. would have been kind of neat. So I'm just doing this super lightly because this sponge dauber is a little wet, so it's picking up ink like nobody's business. There you go. So we're going to just put that on there. And I feel like now it's also a little bit too humongous. So I might have to trim that down some. Oh, heavens. Let's see. Yep. It's going to be kind of like a very, I don't know. What do you call those, those, uh, shapes that are, God, I don't know, a rhombus maybe? Yeah, good enough. All right, we're going to do that. And if I feel like this is too big, because it is kind of big, I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals just to kind of keep it away from there a little bit. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. Maybe make sure you cut your piece ahead of time so it's a little bit to scale. <laughs> it shows the pro. Yeah, it's a process. All right. And I only want to make sure that I put this up far enough because I didn't actually put this on yet. I want to put this up far enough that I make sure that these points don't hang off the end, okay? So that's kind of what I'm going for. So let's see. Put a little bit here. Okay. That. Oops. My dimensional back was still on there. No wonder it wasn't sticking. That's cool because now it kind of looks like a dinosaur photograph. Like the dinosaurs all took a selfie and sent it to your niece or nephew or whoever it may be. So that's cool. So even though this was a little bit of a process, we did do a lot of pre-cutting. You could always even add some blue in the background there for the sky before you add these parts on since these are all glued on. And we trimmed those out. But again, that's simple. So there's card number two. So let me just get all this debris out of the way. And we will move on to our final card. This one I didn't do anything for ahead of time. So I only have... Um, no, I did. I have one strip... And this, that's about it. But everything else is all going to be as we go. So here's this one. And while I'm at it real quick, let me just show you the difference. So theirs is probably, if I were to make a guess, this was most likely on Pineapple Punch. Whereas mine, I put on So Saffron and then added in the uh, Mango Melody. But pretty cool. A little bit different. Still fun. You could add in those little leaves if you wanted to. Remember, we had all those cut out from before. So, really cool. So, the last one we're going to do is this one here. And I'm going to try to make this exactly like it is. So, it's the exact same thing. And we're going to add in these. These are in uh, Pretty Peacock. 
and then we have our little leaves. I don't know what color they are, but we're going to do those. We have the pterodactyl and the aptosaurus or brontosaurus if you're in Fred Flintstone times. So I have, oopsie, this is just my extra piece from before. So we could always use that for something if we needed to. Put this one on here. I have a piece of pretty peacock. So this is our base. So it is five and a half by eight and a half, score it four and a quarter. And then this one I did a little small and I'm gonna tell you why, because I kind of figured if you put this piece up here, right, like that, and then you put this piece down here, you don't really need a full sheet. So this is cut a little bit smaller because I probably had this piece handy, so I figured I would just work with it. So this is three and a half by five and a quarter because we still do want that little little ledge around it. And then this, I believe, is a half an inch, three quarters. So three quarters of an inch, and that's gonna go on the bottom, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this off, that way I can kind of stamp however I want to. To get started, I'm gonna use these, and I'm gonna use Pretty Peacock. So, as you can see, and I just wanna flash in for this, this stamp set, just so you know, when you stamp it, it's never really 100% filled in, if that makes sense. It is not a solid image. None of the stamps in here are a solid image. They kinda of have like a, um, it's like a bumpy look to them if it makes if that makes sense. What I kind of think it's going for is they almost look like so that is pretty solid but you can still see the dots. It almost looks like a distinctive stamp but not exactly. So you just kind of have to figure do you want to have one that's lighter or darker. So I'm going to do darker. So I'm going to do full strength ink. Theirs looks like it's stamped off and I'm going to kind of just do this to the side. Same for this one. Probably should have gone down a little bit lower so I could fit my uh, my leaves in. So I'm going to look like if I don't like it, we can always flip over and start again. So then I have my palm tree leaves. And again, for this one, I'm going to go with pear pizzazz. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink it and I'm going to stamp off before I stamp it. So I'm going to do that for all of them. Hopefully I will remember. Actually, that's not so bad, so I'm not going to flip it. I think that looks pretty good. Whoops, same thing on this side. And I'm just using, like, scrap. I have so much scrap paper that I've finally actually gotten it out and started using it. So this is just scrap paper that I'm stamping off onto. So we have that. So that's pretty much it. Now, I'm going to guess, and this does have a little smudge inside. This is stamped up onto something because I'm betting. Okay, go have a snack. I think they might have stamped this and maybe weren't happy with it or covered it. So what you can do is we can do it stamped onto here. And then if we don't like it, we'll just change it. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with a lighter color. You know what I'm going to actually use? I'm going to use the seaside spray. We'll see what that looks like. And if we don't like the way it looks, we can always cover it up with a different piece. I don't think I've ever used this stamp before. So I just want to stamp and make sure it looks nice. Yeah. And I'm going to stamp this off and then stamp it because it is a little bit dark. And if we don't like it, yeah, that is a little bit light. We'll see. If we don't like it, we can always do another piece. And you know what I'm going to do just for the heck of it? I'm going to stamp this ahead of time. I'm going to stamp one full strength and stamp one off. Yeah, that's a little bit light. So we might end up going with that full strength one. So then the only other thing we have to do, let me get this off so I don't put my stamps away with it, is we have to do our dinosaurs. Once again, you can find dinosaurs and you can cut these out, but I'm going to stamp these too. That way you guys can see it and then we will um, cut it out. I like this is shimmer. No, that's regular white. So I just have a piece of whisper white that is slightly dirty. Let's see, it won't fit on there. 
some of these dinosaurs, I have to tell you too, are like a little bit of a crazy size. They don't exactly fit the way you think they're going to fit. And then we have the pterodactyl. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but you can see it has like dots to it. It almost feels like something. Even if you do this ahead of time, if you don't like the way it finishes, I'm going to show you two different ones. One will coat with Versamark. And one we won't. That way you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to do, oh, and they did the little dots on the back of the dinosaur. So I have that out too. We'll do that. So I'm going to do him in, um, I'm just for craziness, I'm going to go with Pineapple Punch. And since he's pretty big, I kind of like to ink down onto it. All right, so there's one. And make sure you use your pad when you have your photopolymer stamps, paper piercing mat or whatever. So he's pretty, actually pretty solid, considering. I didn't think he was going to turn out that well. So then I have my pterodactyl. And I'm going to do the pterodactyl in... Ooh, Mm, I'm going to do them in terracotta tile. Now this one I did not pre-ink with the Versamark, okay? This is just the pterodactyl. So you can see he's a little bit more grainy, if you can tell. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but he's definitely a little bit more grainy. So I'm now going to go back and I'm going to just, so I can show you the difference. I'm going to clean this off. Okay, and I'm going to do uh, Versamark. And this does not hurt your ink, so you don't have to worry about that. And then I'm going to just dip him into the ter uh, pterodactyl, the terracotta tile, and stamp him again. And he does show up a little bit better than this first one. This one has like a big white spot. So I kind of, I will say, for this stamp set, could just be personal preference, but if you don't really like the graininess of it, it doesn't show up nearly as much on the palm tree part. You can always pre-ink these with Versamark. Just makes it a little bit stickier, makes your ink stick a little bit better. Oh, one other thing I forgot. I wanted to add Pretty Peacock to the back of him. There we go. Reach for that. All right, and now all we're going to do is cut these guys out, and we'll put this together. So... I'm just going to grab once again, whoops, wrong set. I have my dinosaurs and here is what I was talking about. So you can cut out an egg. If you wanted to do the hatch card, you can cut this out twice and you can actually, Wendy Cranford did a really good video. You can hook them together and then the egg will hinge. So that's pretty, pretty neat as well. And so I have my long neck and the pterodactyl and I think that's going to be it so let me just run these two through real quick and what did I do with my cutting plate here it is I'm quiet over here. I'm trying to line these up on my magnetic plate without them moving. Okay, so then I have these. Let me just pop these out. Okay. So I did the one that I thought was inked a little bit better. So same thing again. These do cut pretty tightly. If you take the time to line them up, I was just being a little rushy just because. So if you don't like the extra white, you can always go ahead if you'd like and kind of snip that off. It just kind of depends on your preference. You can take your time a little bit more when you line them up. Because you're probably not going to be feeling like you want to not hurry. But I just hate to make you guys wait while I do this. But I also like you to be able to see the process of doing it. So if you want to trim a little bit off, you certainly can. Gonna pop these up under here. And same here. Now the pterodactyl does cut out.
pretty well. But again, if this bothers you, you can always go back in with your terracotta tile. And I think this was my other one that was relatively clean. You go with like a sponge dauber and just kind of sponge the edges of it. Other thing I did with my um, black marker, I'm going to cut this one off, is I kind of went in and gave them those little, I think they have little spikes on their wings. You know, if you've watched The Good Dinosaur like I have, you would know that. <laughs> Anybody else love that movie? Love that movie. Arlo is so darn cute. That was definitely, I think, one of Disney's underrated, underappreciated movies. So I'm going to just take my uh, my black, and I just kind of drew in a little spiky here. I like to have them at the bottom, too. You can kind of give them an eye if you want to. I think that makes them a little bit more realistic looking. Okay, so now all we're going to do is I'm going to snip this out. So I kind of have this trimmed slightly close. This, this looks a little bit crooked. All right, and I want to grab one more thing. I have my trio punch here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just round just two of the corners. I'm not going to do both of them. So just like that. And then I'll just lay this. I need to be trimmed down just a smidgey. trim this down just one more I'm gonna just do one more thing here because it's a little bit big for what I wanted it okay so there's that that looks good okay so now all we have to do is finish putting this together so let me get these little scraps out of the way we have our base which I really really love this peacock so if you haven't seen this in person it's really really pretty Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and snail this one on, and then I'm going to glue on that um, DSP strip so I make sure it lines up the way I want. So I kind of have this, there you go, so you can see better, have a little border on the top, and this one I'm going to line up. I'm going to put glue on this one, liquid glue, that way I can adjust it a little bit. You could absolutely use either side of this too, this, this side of the paper is really pretty. Kind of just lining that up again so it has that nice kind of frame around it and we're going to put these guys on as well you could put these up with dimensionals if you want i want to put a little bit of glue here I'm going to kind of put it askew since I can. Just like that. I'm going to move him in a little bit. There you go. Really cute. So copy, but not an exact. Let me move this over and I'll show you. So we have so this one they did use a different paper totally cool they moved their guy down a little bit you also I totally didn't even see that I can add this one here this won't be difficult I'm gonna add I didn't even see these little wingy things so I'm gonna add those on with the other side so we could do these in you know I'm gonna stick with the same color I'm just gonna add them in a pretty peacock let me see. I think they would go this way. There you go. Totally cute. So we have that card. So this is similar. Again, we did change the inking a little bit. We have this card here. And let me move this one up. We have this one. Kind of goes with that one. Changed up a little bit of the color schemes for those. But, and here's this one here, in case you didn't see it. So we have those cards, really simple. 
Lots of fun though. And then we made this one, which I will do again, a separate video for this. So you'll be able to see it. This was the bridge fold card. And then again, if you wanted to put the backing on, if you make any mistakes, you could just add some little gems to cover it up. And I realized that I covered this gem up and he covered that. So I didn't really need that one after all, but really fun cards. I will do a separate video for this one. So I'm going to keep this one out of the screen just so you guys can see. If you all would like to make these cards, once again, the cool thing about this is you can order, which I did order. I still haven't used this ribbon yet. Did I get that? What is that? That is denim ribbon. That must be here somewhere because I ordered the entire suite. Maybe I just haven't found it yet. So if you order, you have one button or one number, I should say, and you get one of everything in the suite. You still do get a discount if you buy the stamp set and the die together. And you will end up afterwards getting a couple dollar discount if you buy all of the stuff together. So just put in one number and you get one of everything. Or you can do the bundle where you get the dies and the stamp set and you get them 10% off, which is pretty cool. So when you get that in my online store... All you have to do is either put in the suite number or the bundle number. Either one is fine. Every order for me does always get a thank you. I have been sending out some really great uh, DSP that's retired. I sent out some foil DSP. Always send out a thank you note. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for your business. I uh, want to tell one person who is asking me something about my blog. I do not have a follow button because you can only follow apparently if you are a WordPress person. And mine is hosted a little bit differently. So if you follow me on Facebook... Or if you follow me on YouTube, if you make sure you turn on, there's a little bell on the YouTube button. I think it's like right right next to subscribe. If you turn the bell on, it will tell you every time I make a new video or post a video or if I'm live on YouTube. And the same for Facebook. If you hit follow and then you set your alerts to all, every time I go live, it will tell you. So that is the best way to find out. Plus, I do always post my um, Facebook posts. I should, I'm sure say my blog posts to Facebook when I'm done. So if you follow me on Facebook, you'll find out when I have a new blog post as well. Uh, one other thing, I do have a newsletter that I send out. I try not to annoy you too much, so I probably won't send one out either until tomorrow or next week. And I send them out probably about twice a month unless there's some earth-shattering news. So if you'd like to be part of that, all you have to do is send me your email address to rachthestamper at gmail.com. If you would like to receive a new holiday catalog and you don't already have a demonstrator, I'd be happy to send you one. You do need to send your full mailing address, including your zip code, to rachthestamper at gmail.com. And you could just put catalog request in the title. I hope you all have a wonderful 4th of July. Enjoy your freedom and all the other fun things that we as obnoxious Americans are able to do. And make sure that you're safe if you put off any fireworks so you have your fingers so you can craft. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.